Morning, Coach. Morning. Uh, Coach, if you want to go ahead with an opening statement, then we'll uh, open it up for questions. Yeah, opening statement here, just coming off of a, a long week last week, you know, playing three games in seven days. And, you know, we have a lot of wear and tear on our bodies. And uh, we're trying to get recovered and obviously get ready to play a really good Purdue team uh, tomorrow night. And, um, you know, from this point forward, you know, we really don't have a, a ton of a ton of breaks uh, as you look forward. So biggest thing is trying to get fresh, get ready. And um, at the end of the day, play against a really good Purdue team on Thursday night. It's been our focus. Alex. Archie, a couple of weeks ago, you guys put out the release on Parker Stewart joining the program. I'm curious if he's now with the team and kind of what the plan is, I guess, to integrate him moving forward. Uh, he is on campus and he's um, just started to, to really get um, integrated with our group. You know, um, his arrival was, um, you know, one of which he had to go through a quarantine situation. Um, couldn't really be around a whole lot until he was through that. And uh, once he's through that, now he's, he's in our testing program and he can start to, um, you know, get, you know, a little bit more acclimated, but um, he's got a lot of work to do just in terms of getting acclimated with the team, getting acclimated with the doctors, COVID protocol, physical exams. So he's not anywhere near um, joining us for practice or anything like that. He is now full go in terms of being a part of what we're doing. And each day that goes by, hopefully we can get him a little bit smoother in terms of his transition. And the hope would be that, um, you know, hopefully sometime next week and the week after, you know, he can be begin to start to work with us on the practice floor um, and see where we're at with that. But as of right now, um, there's no real plan to uh, be able to integrate him any which way possible, just with uh, the circumstances surrounding uh, his arrival, uh, medical, doctors, um, everything that a normal guy who transfers in at the break has to go through. Jeff. Hey, Coach, looking at uh, Bart Torbeck's numbers, uh, both you and Purdue are really strong defensive efficiency. Do you expect this to be one of those grind out games or are there ways for either team to sort of find a way to maybe open this thing up offensively? Well, I think, you know, both teams um, try their best, obviously have a defensive mentality, you know, Purdue, um, very physical team. Um, they're getting better as the season continues to progress because of their depth. They're playing a lot of different guys. And um, as the conference slate has, has really started to, you know, get underway, you can kind of see, um, their physicality coming back, they're trapping of the post, they're creating more problems, and they're playing a lot of different combinations of players. So I think as the season goes, they're going to continue to even get better uh, defensively. For us, you know, we're, we've hung our hat on that. Uh, I don't think we're playing as well defensively uh, as we once were um, earlier in the year. Um, we're also playing a lot of different combinations of players here recently, and our depth inside is challenged. But I do think both teams are coming into the game knowing that that has to be a part of the plan. From an offensive standpoint, Purdue's an execution team. Um, they're a team that really thrives uh, playing inside out. Um, they established their front court players as well as anybody in the country. And their perimeter guys do an unbelievable job of, of feeding the post, but also playing off it. Um, within their transition, within their actions, um, you know, they're shooting the ball a lot better. Uh, Stefanovic is a terrific shooter. I think Brandon Newman's really added the three-point element. Uh, Jaden Ivey's a scorer from the perimeter as well. And Thompson continues to be a guy that gives him a boost in, in certain games uh, from behind the line. So they have a lot of different combinations of players. I think they're very good offensively. I think it starts with them in the post, as, as everyone can probably imagine with Travion and then Edie coming in the game. Um, but their perimeter guys, uh, as they get going and as they shoot, produce a very difficult cover uh, because of their execution. For us, you know, we're going to try to get into transition as much as we can and be spontaneous. Um, we have to do an unbelievable job of taking care of the ball. You know, one of the big reasons why we weren't successful um, here lately is handling post traps and being able to, you know, offensively play and execute and be able to get a quality shot, you know, when, when they're taking things away of our normal look. So big thing for us is to take care of the ball above all costs. I think that's a big thing. And um, we're going to have to keep them off the boards as much as anything. I think they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Um, but, you know, from from our standpoint, how the game's going to go, I think both teams, you know, pride themselves defensively. Uh, I think Purdue's a, a very, very good team on both ends of the floor and they're getting better. Tom. 
Archie, can you uh, update us on Armand for one? And uh, for two, I know you've had half a season to get used to playing with no fans, but uh, is this going to be the strangest night of all the IU-Purdue rivalry with uh, with an empty building? Well, first, Armand is um, not 100% um, clearly. He's missed basically three games. If you take him out of the Maryland game, he's not been a part of three games in a row. And, um, you know, he's continuing to do as much as he possibly can. He's about, you know, nine, ten days away from his sprain. It's a legitimate sprain that's really limited him. Um, he did a little shooting yesterday. He did a little running and moving more so than he did a week ago. And uh, we're just going to basically have to see game time decision on how he feels if he can't go. Um, he can't go, but he's definitely not 100%. And, um, you know, we're just basically focusing on trying to get him back as, as fast as we can. But at the same time, you know, he's got to be able to be effective. Um, uh, definitely, I think playing without fans, and I think every coach would agree that a home game, especially in our conference, with the crowds that we all have, um, is a huge uh, disadvantage at home. Sometimes it plays against you. I think in this game right here, um, you know, especially the Purdue game, those who have been here before know the environment um, in both facilities, especially our facility, that uh, playing at home is a little bit different. And uh, teams go on runs. You don't have that support behind you. You go on runs. You don't have that momentum behind you. And um, it's something you, you're getting used to at this point in time. We haven't played a ton, a ton of home games, um, but it's definitely different. I think it will be, you know, awfully disappointing not to have fans uh, when we play this type of, uh, you know, this type of game. It means a lot in terms of the energy level that's uh, surrounding it. Um, so we're getting used to it. I definitely think it's a little bit different. Uh, but in this type of game, I think both teams are, are focused in on themselves and you have to you know, be ready to roll. And this is one where your intensity level, your concentration through the ups and the downs, whether you're home or on the road is, is gonna feel somewhat the same once the ball gets tipped up. Zach? I guess kind of following, maybe not specifically in the Armand question, but um, Purdue's got obviously not just the size to throw at Trace, but also maybe to protect the rim, even as they defend him. I mean, how important, how much do you emphasize just the, the ability to finish through contact, the ability to be ready for and, and handle contact for a guard like Rob or a guard like Al that really likes to get to the rim in a game like this when you know that even if they pay some extra attention to Trace defensively, there's going to be a big bodies waiting for them? Well, Purdue does a great job of defending the two. If you look at their numbers and you look at where they're at, they're, they're one of the teams, the best teams in the country and basically not giving up two-point baskets. You know, part of it is, you know, they're, they're constantly post doubling. And, and the other thing is they have great physicality and size and um, everything around the rim is challenged. Everything in, in the paint, just to be quite honest with you, is very, very hard. And um, that's what makes them tough to deal with. Uh, but it's a game where you have to make plays. And I think, you know, being able to play um, off the doubles, being able to attack the paint, um, you got to be smart. But at the same time, you know, uh, the game comes down to being able to make some open shots. You know, it really does. And uh, for our team, you know, it continues to be about being able to control what you can control. And when guys are open, they have to step in and, and uh, do a good job of being ready to shoot it or, or ready to attack it. But, um, you know, without question, the paint is um, it's, it's as tough as it's going to get in any game when you play against those guys. Last question, Bob. You know, Archie, what, what do you enjoy most about coaching Trace, Trace Jackson Davis? You know, Trace is an easy guy to coach um, because he's such a great teammate and he's a great kid. Um, there's very few days where he's moody. There's very few days where, you know, he doesn't come in and, and, and absorb what you're trying to do from a game plan perspective. Um, you know, he's like every other young guy, um, who goes through the ups and downs of a season, but he doesn't let it bother him very much. And, um, he's not a guy that you're constantly trying to, um, you know, coach every day to plot him along or, or, or to do that. He's got a great heart. Um, when he's motivated and his head and his heart are aligned, I've always told him this, he's special. And, um, you know, he's doing an unbelievable job for us under some circumstances where he's having to handle a load that's, um, you know, unexpected and at the same time, very difficult. You know, he leads the Big Ten in minutes as a front court player, which is like unheard of. And, um, you know, we're giving some up with him being on the floor that amount of time. And he's probably losing some, some burst and some explosiveness throughout the course of games. Um, but at the same time, you know, he handles it. He takes the load on his back. Um, he comes in every day, he works. Um, he's a great teammate, most importantly in anything, uh, when your best guy has that type of vibe about him, um, you know, he, he brings people with him and, um, he knows what we, what he means to us. But from a coaching standpoint, um, you're coaching a kid with a great heart 
and you're coaching a kid with great intentions, wants to do well, wants to do what you ask him to do. And uh, from my standpoint, I can't really ask much more of him. Thank you. Coach, thank you. All right.